Hare Krishna. So I was on Facebook yesterday and a brother by the name of Ray Johnson made a post that Pata is the creator, also known as Brahman or the Supreme Brahman. Sekhmet is the destroyer or Shiva and Nefertum is the preserver or Vishnu. Okay, coming straight into point now. Also, he had mentioned on his post that he didn't believe none of them. He was just, you know, reiterating or sharing a post. And that's cool if you want to post stuff you don't believe. But when you tread upon other people's system, at least be smart enough or brave enough to research it and present it properly so that people won't be misguided. Because you do, Brother Ray Johnson, present yourself as a learned person. And I expect better from you. So start doing your research before you posting about other people's systems, especially systems you don't believe in. I'm not coming at you, but I got to speak the truth. And I ain't got to worry about no rebuttal because you told me that you was going to ignore the video anyway, which is cool because I treat your videos the same way. I actually ignore them because they're full of a bunch of speculation with all due respects. Now, let's get to the point. <clears throat> in ancient Kemet, you had a trinity composed of Pata, Sekhmet, and Nefertum. I have previously covered this information in a, quite a few other videos. I think I even did it in one video called Egyptian and Hindu, a comparison. Look it up. I think it's in there. I've, I reiterate stuff very often because I'm always getting new followers, new subscribers, and they're not familiar with all of these concepts, right? Which is like just like one of my favorite things to always mention in reference to the Bhagavad Gita is that the Bhagavad Gita covers five very important topics that affect us all. Bhagavad Gita deals with the super soul, the indwelling super soul, not some mystery spook, but actually the indwelling super soul who is the goal of yagna or sacrifice and the goal of meditation. Once again, the goal of meditation is not to create a stronger mind or to clear your mind and it's not to give you superpowers. The goal of meditation, according to who created meditation, was to see Lord Vishnu in your heart chakra because the indwelling Paramatma, supreme soul, is there in the heart. And another topic that the Bhagavad Gita deals with is the personal soul, the Atman, you, the eternal individual. Another topic it deals with is time, because time is eternal, both in the material and spiritual world. The only difference is that in the spiritual world, time is not as evident. It's conspicuous by its very absence. Then you have something called nature, material nature. Material nature is the science that has everybody thinking that the woman is God and that she could do everything without the presence of the man. A lot of people talk about there was a time when women could reproduce without men. That's possible, you know, but I'm going to be honest with you. There's 2016, ain't none of us frogs, and I've never seen a woman have a baby by herself. They always needed an active male principle. So, yes, the woman is God in so much that she is the womb. She is the bindi. She's the original dot of the universe from which we all come from. But I'm not going to give her the full credit and say that she is God all by herself if she needs sperm to build something. So, once again, no, the woman is not supreme. The man is not supreme. They are both coming from someone else. And then the last topic that Bhagavad Gita deals with is karma. And out of all of those topics, I love this part the most. Four of them are eternal, can never be destroyed. But one of them is temporary and it can be destroyed, altered, or changed. And that's karma. So realize that whatever your lot in life, it is bound to change by your activities and your desires. Your activities and your desires are what forms your qualifications by which you will get your next apartment or your next girlfriend, your next husband, or your next service for Krishna. You know what I mean? It's all based upon your desire and your karma. It also determines what kind of body you will get. Will you get the body of a monkey? Will you get the body of a man? Will you get the body of a human? Also to my friend Om Namaha Shivaya on Facebook, he replied to one of my posts that Krishna is everything and everything is Krishna, so it's all equal. But I had to disagree with him. And I presented a challenge to him, which he never um, responded to, that if all is equal, then I just wanted him to prove a simple demonstration. And I was, you know, I told him I'm going to give him an opportunity to do three things. Each one is going to be easier than the other. 
And if you can pull off any one of those street things, it will prove that you are the supreme lord, or at least somewhere close. He never responded to the challenge, which was very wise of him because I don't play. And the challenge was really simple. The first challenge was, today's going to be a long day for me. I got a lot to do, so do me a solid. Just let the sun stay up for a few more minutes. All I need is a few more minutes of sunlight to get done what I got to do. That would have been the first challenge. But if that was too hard for him to do, I was going to actually, the first challenge would have been manifest your universal form because Krishna manifested his universal form 3100 BCE, which was 5,000 years ago on the battlefield of Kurukshetra in the middle of a world war, which Kemet civilization also bears witness to the fact that they had a world war in th approximately 3100 BCE. So I ain't got no problem with that. Please manifest your universal form if all of us are equal to Krishna. If you can't do that, give me a few extra minutes of sunlight. And if you can't do that, all right, I got a simple challenge for you. Just create one functional blade of grass. A lot of scientists out there right now, they're creating sperm in a um, laboratory setting. Sperm that really works and can produce another life. And people want to worship these scientists and act like they did something great. But if I'm reinventing the wheel... I'm not doing nothing special. If I can create a sperm, but I have to use other sperm or cells from another living organism, I didn't create anything. I just recombined things. There's a difference between creation and recombination. And that's going to take us back to the topic of the video for Brother Ray Johnson. So in your post, you said that Pata is the creator of Brahman, Sekhmet is the destroyer of Shiva, and Nefertum is the preserver of Vishnu. Let's get to the deal. Pata, this is how I was taught by our illuminated black scholars. Pata, thought a thought. Pata, spoke a word. And Sekhmet made it happen. And from the combination of the thought, the word, and the active energetic force, or Sekhmet, or Shakti, because Sekhmet comes from the root word Sekhem which means power. And Sekhem is also related to a word that means power in Sanskrit, which is Shakti. So Shakti and Sekhmet are both the same thing. If anybody knows anything about the duality in the material world, wherever you have a deity, his Shakti is also manifest. So remember, Lord Shiva has nothing to do. He just sits down and meditates on Sri Madan Mohan. The only time Shiva becomes an active principle is when his wife, Parvati, or, or Sati, forces him into recognizing the material world, either through her beauties, or through her needs, or through her wants, or through her desires. It is the woman who activates the male principle because she has the energy or the power, the Sekhem. The average man would just sit around. If we was in a world full of no women, we wouldn't get much accomplished. We'd just be sitting around all the time. It's the woman who activates a man to go get a job, to go get nice clothes, to go get money, to provide food, clothing, and shelter so that he can enjoy his senses in the form of family life. But when you see men who have abandoned family life and have moved on to the transcendental platform, like a sannyas or a monk, those people generally dedicate all of their energies, not in the pursuit of sex or foodstuffs, but they put... they put their energy into pursuing the spiritual or the transcendental reality. So once again, Pata is a thinker. Pata is a speaker. He injects those energies into Sekhmet and with her very powerful powers, Sekhmet is interesting because she existed before material time was manifested. So we know that Sekhmet is there in the transcendental world before the material world is manifested. So... She cannot be Shiva. Shiva is the ruler of one of the trigunas or the three gunas. He controls the principle of destruction or ignorance. He's in charge of destruction. He's in charge of the demolition crew when it's time to rewind the universe. When Vishnu starts to inhale, that's when Shiva gets really, really busy. You improperly identified Nefertum as Vishnu or the preserver. But brother, you got it backwards. If you go to ancient Kemet, your name is Ray Johnson, and you got a lot of Kemetic symbolism on your stuff. By the way, you're, you're an admitted atheist. You don't believe in God. And yet and still, you praise a civilization that believed in God. 
Egypt was God conscious. They had vestiges of what looked like modern Hinduism. And we know that modern Hinduism is a derivative of the worldwide and universal wide Vedic system. Once again, it's not to be mixed up with nothing Indian or Indian philosophy or Indian spirituality. Vedic is the vibration that came down that little lotus stem that Nefertum was born on. The vibration, once again, we're getting a vibration from somewhere else. It came down into the material world, directly into the heart of Nefertum or Brahma. And if you study, it will tell you that Nefertum was born in a stage of triple darkness because there was nothing around him. The Vedas confirmed that there was nothing around him except the cosmic waters of noon. And he was floating on a lotus flower and he couldn't even find the origin of the lotus flower. And he was going down the stem and he was so scared and he was so afraid and he didn't know anything until he heard a Vedic Vibration and the Vedic vibration that he heard was tapas, tapas, penance and austerity. So he started meditating for so many thousands of celestial ages. And as he meditated, those high frequency Vedic vibrations from the breathing, the very breathing of Lord Vishnu turned into Vedic vibrations, which coalesced into his material, into the, the material heart of Lord Brahma or Nefertum as the sound code for the matrix. So the matrix could not be formulated until Krishna or Vishnu gave us the vibration. Once again, that still brings us back to Pata as being the originator. No, we're not dealing with Pata as the creator. Creator is only dealing with material energy. But we're talking about before there was any material manifestation, Pata was thinking and Sekhmet was acting. So you cannot have Sekhmet represent Shiva because Shiva only comes into play when you get into the material world. Matter of fact, Shiva had to break into the spiritual world. And as a matter of fact, he got slapped up for that. It's all in the pastimes of Radha Krishna and the gopis. You know what I'm saying? And that's how Shiva got the name of Gopeshwara, controller of or the main controller of the, the gopis. But actually, he was he's the guardian of the spiritual world now. He guards one of the gates to the Rasa dance. But that's a whole nother um subject. But once again, no brother, you're wrong. Sekhmet is not Shiva. Nefertum can't be the preserver. You can't create and preserve at the same time. That's where delegation of authority comes in. You can create a business, but that don't mean that you're good enough to run the business. So you delegate authority. This Nefertum or this Brahma is not a preserver. He is the creative. I will call him the impetus, but he's not even the impetus because he received that energy from Pata or Vishnu. So let's really put things in their proper place now. Sekhmet is actually the female energetic energy active principle of God. She is Godhead in feminine form. She is Shakti. She's the energy behind everything that we do. <laughs> Nefertum is Brahma. He's a creator. He is not a preserver. Actually, Lord Vishnu acts in the form of a preserver and he lays down in the salt ocean. And we all know salty or brine, things that are brined are preserved. That's why this little planet that we live on is so well preserved over billions of years because most of the oceans in this world are salt water oceans. And if you look inside the womb of a woman, the child is suspended in amniotic fluid, which is a salt ocean. It's preserving your child so that it could be born into this material world. So Brother Ray, don't play no games. I'm going to give you some advice. You need to get your information from authorized sources. You're out there, you're speculating, and you're presenting yourself as learned man, but you're actually misleading people. And I'm not even saying you're doing it on purpose. I would never say that. You're actually a good dude. But you're misleading people with your speculation. It is so many so-called conscious Negroes out there and conscious, I don't care, conscious Europeans, conscious Asians. If you're speculating, you ain't got nothing. See somebody who has some information. For some real, for real, bona fide information. So once again, Sekhmet is not the destroyer. Yes, she did act in the capacity of a destroyer when Ra was being disrespected, disrespected by these silly little humans. So he sent down Sekhmet to handle her business. And we don't have no problem with that because whenever you see the lion, somebody's going to get scratched. 
The ancient Nubians knew about the lion-headed deity. They called him Apetamek. And how you know that they knew about the lion-headed deity that was spoken of in India as Narsingha Dev is because when you read Narsingha Kavacha or the shield of Narsingha, it clearly tells you that he sees in all directions. So if you go Google the word Apetamek and look for his picture, you'll see a lion-headed man whose head is pointed in all directions. It all it all coincides, but all you need is somebody to connect the dots. So, Brother Ray Johnson, please humble yourself because you don't know these things. You speculate on these things. I'm going a, I'm to a keep it 100 with you. Religion. Religion without philosophy or science is sentimentalism and it also evolves into fanaticism but science or philosophy without god or religion is just speculation so you need a balance or oh, you're totally on the speculation side you've eliminated god but you bear witness to science science has an originating point science itself is looking for a unifying theory so if the scientists are smart enough to look for god why aren't you? I would like to leave you with those thoughts today. Once again, Pata is not the creator. Brahma or Nefertum is the creator. Sekhmet doesn't fit into this um, this this um, divine trinity when you're coming into the material world. Sekhmet's purpose is actually, if she's going to be a part of the, the, the divine trinity, she's the divine trinity in the spiritual world. She is the Shakti. She, I wouldn't even call her a part of the divine trinity because guess what? How's it going? Good. Good? Yeah, my mom has a meeting upstairs. Do your thing. All right? You good? Yeah, I'm good. Just do good in school, all right? All right. Good, good. Yeah, Um. to be honest, you know, Sekhmet and, and the Bhagawan are inseparable because Radha is the internal energy of Krishna. So you can't just say Krishna, you say Radha Krishna. You say the Shakti first and then you say the God. So once again, Sekhmet is not even separable. She can't be separated from Patak because she is his energy and he is the energetic. So you got to know these little these little nuances to really to hold up to scrutiny. You see, let me tell you the difference between me and you, Brother Ray Johnson. I'm going to be 100. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. A man could call you right now and say, yo, listen, I got Yankee Stadium for the weekend and I got 10,000 people, 19,000 people who want to fill up Yankee Stadium or Madison Square Garden to hear you speak about something significant. Could you accept the challenge? I doubt that. But me, I could accept the challenge right now. Put me in front of a soccer stadium of 500,000 racist Aryan Nazis. Put me there in a soccer stadium. You know what I would do? I would start teaching them about the swastika, suastika, and I would teach them about the word Aryan and show them that they have been misled. They have been misled by people who don't have their best interests at heart. And I would teach them about the original history, dealing with the Yavana and Malecha society and show them that 3,100 years ago, or no, 5,000 years ago, they were fighting for the wrong side. They were fighting under Kalyavana and Kalyavana got burnt up in a cave. Here's some advice to all people of the planet Earth. Be wise. Don't fight against Krishna. Don't even fight against anybody who looks like Krishna. Don't fight against a deity if it's blackish. Because Krishna is blackish. You know what I'm saying? Don't fight against Krishna. Don't fight against his people. You won't get burned. If I forgot to mention anything or left anything out, it's cool. Put it in the comments box and let's rock out. But once again, brother, if they tell me right now, after I get off work, yo, you got to go give a lecture in front of 800 million people. If I got to give, a, let me tell you what's so good about Krishna consciousness. I'm in a position where I could give a lecture to any life forms. If I'm giving a lecture to life forms that don't speak English or don't speak human language, then I could just chant Hare Krishna. And that's all the lecture that they will need. But if I have to address an audience of demons, I know how to talk to them. If I have to address an audience of humans, I know how to talk to them. And if I know how, if I have to address the demigods, the devotas, the Lua, all of those beings, I know how to talk to them. But you, sir, don't because you're a speculator. Enough love and respect. Hare Krishna.